it's uh, my pleasure to uh, invite up uh, a friend of mine um, who uh, I've seen uh, career has expanded uh, significantly, um, and I'm delighted uh, to see that. Uh, a view from the buy side, Kirk McDonald, please. Good to see you, my friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is like a, a, ch a, ch a chat amongst, uh, amongst friends. Um, so this could, I, go, this could go bad then. It, it could, it could, <laughs> it could. Um, uh, so, so since I've known you, you went from publisher at Time yeah. uh, to a sell side platform, yeah. Pubmatic, then to Xander, which is sort of like yeah, horizontal, yeah, yeah, yeah. and now you're at an agency. Yeah, yeah. Near as I can tell, you're moving from right to left across the Lumiscape. Okay, yeah. Is your, are you going to finish your career as a, as a CMO, or what, what's the <laughs> um, uh, I keep uh, I keep chasing uh, complex problems, puzzles. That's that's probably the only thing. Um, and I would say that all of those have been the same job. Um, they've all been um, keep the priorities of business continuity high while figuring out the opportunities and pot potential of business transformation. So. The next 10 years of every company I've joined has been different than the last 10. Um, so that's not any different in this job. So um, if there's a business transformation job out there, I'll, I'll, I'll go seek it and try and figure it out. I, uh, I inadvertently left out um, a very brief but influential stint as executive in residence at Luma. Uh, actually, the pivotal inflection point in my career, actually. <laughs> I don't know how you missed that. So, uh, so there was no defined career strategy from migration of those? Was it opportunistic? Was it, um, how would you just... It literally has been curiosity. So right. um, I fell in love with the industry because I fell in love with the intersection of consumers' content and the platforms on which they connect. Um, and I still am pursuing that. Ad advertising being one of those content choices that a consumer can engage with or not engage with. Um, and that has led me all the way through. But I mean, I tripped into print advertising, but then started tracking this. And when the internet came along, was yep. super early. I'm gonna date myself and maybe um, you and our friendship. Um, and that's really just been the thing that's pulled me through every single time. Yep. So I'm still pulling on that same thread. And I don't know where it'll end, um, but I know that the world is getting more complex, complex not less complex. Um, and I've been fortunate, a lot of things picked up along the way are gonna be hyper relevant in the future, so that's the deal. Uh, your position at running a, a major media buying uh, agency, uh, did you feel qualified for it when you were interviewing, and do you feel more qualified or less qualified for it now? Uh, that, wow, that's a good one. That wasn't in the prep question. No. Where are we going? No, I don't know. This I'm is the danger out. of this. Um, uh, so, um, I sure didn't think I'd ever end up at an agency or an agency holding company. I have tons of friends out here who I have talked into leaving the buy side and going to the sell side. <laughs> I see some laughs. Um, and for the most part, I felt like the swagger of the buy side was gone. I think the buy side's model is, is, um, is dead or dying. So then why go to the buy side? Well, it was in the moment of sort of these conversations I was having with Christian, that I realized, wait a minute, TV model is dead or dying, linear TV model. Um, the print model was dead or dying when I left that industry and moved into something else. And I would argue that the digital model, Web 1.0, has been replaced, and now we see Web 3.0 on the horizon. And I realized the common thread is, if you can see the possibilities of the next 10, and have empathy for the reality of the past 10, you have a chance to be relevant. Um, the world's not getting less interesting, it's getting more interesting. Brands still have the same challenges, and then it wasn't that the agency model was de dead, it just needed to reinvent itself, and I like reinventions. We, we, we made the reference to cockroaches. The, yeah, the it's Rashad. not going anywhere. Yep, yep. Not going anywhere. What's, uh, what's the biggest surprise you've had in the, in the new job? What, where, where your the difference between the reality and the perception that you had going in? Um, I thought that uh, everyone on the agency side played a lot more golf than we do. <laughs> um, we, it turns out we actually have a, quite a bit of work to do 
um, because every single client that we meet is actually in a different place on this journey. Um, so we do a lot of sort of like deep dives, high level, deep dives, high level, and I did not realize how much of the time on the agency side is spent really with that client engagement, client edu education. Um, just because, again, on the sell side, you think it's all about the media relationships, right. but it's, it really is um, heavily about the brand relationships. Mm -hmm. I, I'm curious about that construct, that relationship between agency and client. I mean, as you pointed out, we're getting more complex, as we said in the state of yeah. digital. Complexity is only going up. That tends to help intermediaries like agencies or bankers. Uh, but, yep. but how would you describe the evolution of that relationship between agencies and clients? Is it, 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 do they rely more uh, on you now for expertise given the complexity? Uh, what's changing? So I think it's changing as we literally right now. I think the next 12 to 18 months will be interesting. I believe a lot of brands, um, and by the way, the agency side, put a lot of in, um, investment in segregating and siloing off vertical expertise. Um, and this eventually got agencies into this world of like the separation between media and creative, but then social is in another part and programmatic is in this other part. And then clients started thinking, well, I can at least pull the media buying portion mm -hmm. in because since it's separated from my creative agency, which feels artistic and I can't do that. And I think we've invested as an industry a lot in doing that. And I think that's ending. I see right now when we're looking at the RFPs that are coming in, increasingly the conversation is, how can I actually get best of all of your capabilities? Or how can you help me, even in my large organization, begin to connect the dots, not just across all the pieces that touch marketing, but even marketing's role and relevance in business decisions and overall strategy. And a lot of the conversations we've been brought into have us showing them an org construct right. that have us connect those dots more seamlessly. What, 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 are the, what are the loudest voices on the client side? What are they asking for? What's, what's their zeitgeist issues these days? So um, you, you still have all the regular noise, and we wouldn't be, um, we wouldn't be um, being sort of present if we didn't acknowledge it. it's upfront week, so lots of that activity is yep. going on. So you know, there's still the constant rate of change and savings mitigations conversations that are underway. Um, increasingly, no, um, the procurement or the buying part of the um, organization and the uh, strategy or business part, the marketing and uh, the brand leaders are beginning to at least line up around the fact that we want to get a picture where uh, our storytelling is comprehensive of the creative story, the, um, the messaging, as well as the placement, right? So how do we bring those together? Can you help us make sense of the data we've got to tell those stories more effectively? Um, but that continues to come up more and more right now. I mean, it's a data conversation often, too. I've often, often thought that the relationship between professional services agencies and technology is, is, a, is a tenuous one. Um, and yet, we've seen uh, Publicis, IPG, and Dentsu all make data marketing acquisitions with um, um, Axiom, Conversant, and Merkle, mm -hmm. uh, is, 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 and, and if you ask them, they would say that looks like the future of agencies. Yeah. Does that yeah. feel right? I mean, you, you guys were, I mean, WP was kind of early in that, yeah. had a wave of that. Yeah. Does that. Does that ring true? That is true. I think the agency is turning more into a, um, an enterprise platform, enterprise software company. Um, our, software company? Uh -huh. Wow, that's, that's yeah. bold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and uh, again, the solutions that we're offering and the things that we're doing are platform level. Um, our investments were early in data um, in parts of WPP. Wonderman Thompson data has been there. But then even inside of Group M's acquisition of assets like 24-7 all led to things like M Platform, all of these parts of our Group M data and technology business that came together last year when we launched Choreograph. Um, again, realizing that so many of the data acquisitions that others have done kind of preceded the new current laws. So we think we hopefully got that timing better, um, um, this concept that you don't use data because you have it and you leave um, first party data owners in charge of their data. So inside Choreograph, we kind of figure out how to resolve your data compose and expand it through synthetic data and lookalike modeling and then activate it. Um, really just three simple things. So that 
added to the recent announcements of taking the Essence business, which, which has primarily been driven by data and analytics, and merging that with Mediacom, yep. our TV scaled buying organization. More and more, you're seeing us produce and bring to market what look like software and enterprise solutions in our response to client needs. Cool. One of the opportunity areas created by the privacy and focus on first party data is a creative technology. And this is uh, a yeah. field that I think is like gotten short, short like long overdue for uh, investment uh, because it's such a critical uh, part of the efficacy of, of ads. Companies like uh, Vidmob and Clinch and Seltra are doing amazing things in creative technology. Is, is that how are agencies viewing that? Is, that, is that? is there a conflict there? Does it co feel competitive? Or is this technology that you look to leverage? Uh, look to leverage. Um, we're, we're, we're learning, building our own, and then going to um, learn from those, from those sort of vertical specialists again, and then figure out whether or not there are opportunities for us to grow. You know, we've got our organic growth, but are there inorganic opportunities as well? It is just confirmation that um, media and, and creative have to actually be joined. Yep. So it's not right person, right time, without right message. The right message has to follow that same line, and we are bringing um, the pieces closer together. And you're seeing us, because we're a public company, you're seeing us announce things um, in press that indicate these sort of joining of capabilities inside yep. of the organization in a very systematic way. Final question. Uh, in our state, at the end, we finished our state of digital by discussing shiny new things: the metaverse, <laughs> Web three, crypto, NFTs. I thought you and I had a good NFT opportunity when you were doing the 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 you know when we were not COVID exposed. But at this point, everyone's had it. Yeah, that's true. Once. Yeah. So. Um, but uh, and our perspective was take a take a balanced yeah. view on things. What are clients telling you? Are they excited by the shiny new things? Do you spend much time on them, or are you busy with your day job of, you know. So our day job lives. is to actually spend enough amount of time on shiny new things uh, because our clients need the answers. Um, so I think all three of those require a different answer each. Um, I'll focus on meta um, just because I think where we are on NFTs is, is, is not necessarily clear yet and, and, and you know, Web3 is, is again, uh, a different conversation. We recently did a big partnership with Epic Games. For, you don't, th for those who don't know, obviously you do. They, those are the founders of Fortnite, really to come in and help upskill a lot of our talent to understand how to actually build and bring creative ideas to life in uh, these 3D environments. Those kind of investments and partnerships are critical to us understanding shiny new things. We, we think all of them will have relevance in different time horizons. Um, and I thought you said it really well earlier. It then is incumbent on us to figure out how much time investment to put in each one of them. Right, right. Kirk, pleasure to Always have you friend. with a perspective on the side. Thank right. you. Thank you.